Hey everyone, I thought I'd give you an update on my thin film transistor progress. So whenever we want to make something like a TFT or uh, display technology or anything like that, we have to have a way to pattern all these thin films on a substrate. And so I'm going to show you one possible method called uh, photoresist liftoff. So the process starts by uh, loading a microscope slide into this, which is called a spin coder. And I built this just from a relatively cheap DC brushed motor and um, an acrylic tube. And this thing spins a few thousand RPM once it gets going. It takes a good five or ten seconds to spin up. And once it's at speed, I drip a little bit of isopropyl alcohol on the slide uh, to clean it off, and the alcohol flies off the side. And then I apply a little of this, which is a photoresist that I bought on eBay. And the seller was uh, selling this for doing home PCBs, uh, but unfortunately I don't know exactly what chemical it is. It's green, that's, that's about all I know, and it's positive. It's a positive photoresist. So the spin coder will fling off most of the resist, and I'll let it spin for another 30 seconds or so to make sure that the layer thickness is as consistent as possible. And I'm guessing that the layer is somewhere around one micron, maybe a few micron or something in that range. But I, I, unfortunately, I have no easy way of testing it. Uh, next, I put the microscope slide on the hot plate at about 100 degrees C for one minute. And this will drive off all of the solvents in the photoresist and make sure that there's just that base polymer left. Next, I expose the photoresist to ultraviolet light through a pattern. And in this case, I'm just using uh, sort of a, re a really primitive resolution test that I made on my vinyl cutter. And so it has line pairs of descending thickness. The ultraviolet lamp is an electrophoresis illumination system. So if you're going to be doing DNA analysis, some of the dyes that are used are uh, UV, are phosphorescent basically in UV. So you would put the gel on top of this thing and it would light it up with UV light. The device has six 15 watt UV lamps in there and they peak at 312 nanometer. I calculated this to have somewhere about 20 milliwatts per square cm of UV at the surface and that should be enough to expose the slide in about uh, maybe 30 seconds or even less than that, probably more like 10 seconds. Uh, but I leave it on for about 30 seconds to a minute just to be sure. So we're kind of at this step here on the paper and after the exposure process is done you can actually see the color change so the resist changes from sort of a lime green to a light blue color in the areas that it's been exposed to the ultraviolet light. Next what we want to do is get rid of the resist that we exposed to UV so we develop it and the uh, same seller that um, was selling this on eBay also was selling an unlabeled developer these uh, mystery crystals here, which I'm pretty sure are sodium hydroxide. And um, these are not the best things to use. I'm trying to get some sodium metasilicate, which is a much more forgiving developer. The problem with sodium hydroxide is that it uh, goes from underdeveloped to overdeveloped very quickly. And uh, Mike's Electric Stuff helpfully pointed out that sodium metasilicate pentahydrate is, is a much better choice. So I've got some of that on order. So after the developing process, we've got the pattern photoresist, and the developer has removed it where, where the uh, photoresist was exposed to UV light. So after letting the slide dry, uh, note that it can only be rinsed in water at this point. If you tried to rinse it with alcohol or acetone, the photoresist would completely degrade. So we're sticking to aqueous stuff at this point. After drying, I loaded the slide into my vacuum chamber and did some uh, thermal deposition of aluminum. So this process will work with sputtering too, of course, but my sputter gun needs just a few more tweaks to be uh, reliable enough to use. So I'm going to go back to thermal evap today. And the trick here is that the evaporation of the aluminum will come in at, at fairly close to a right angle to the surface so that all the deposition happens on horizontal surfaces. And you'll see in a minute here that I didn't quite get this to work because my uh, coating thickness was so high. But typically the photoresist would be like a micron thick, and the stuff that you're actually laying down would be far less uh, thick than that, probably more like 100 nanometers. So there would be plenty of room here where the, um, there would be no vertical wall made because the uh, photoresist is so much higher. Um, however, 
this is actually one case where having a negative photoresist is better because the the angle of this cliff here is a little bit more um, inclined with a negative photoresist so that when you deposit from the top these walls will stay very clean. With a positive photoresist the wall angle kind of looks more like this so that you end up with more of a, uh, a wall to coat and this will leave some, some unwanted material as we'll see later. So after the deposition is done the entire slide is coated with aluminum and then we put it in a solvent like acetone, a very aggressive one, and the acetone will seep under here and dissolve the photoresist. Now in this case the aluminum layer was so thick that there was actually a connector going between the layer that I deposited on top of the photoresist and the layer that went right down to the slide. So I had like basically little streamers or flags hanging off. Um, but luckily I blew those off with um, a pipette and the end result was actually not too bad. So here's a picture of it under the microscope and the uh, markings on the, on the uh, ruler there are one millimeter spacing. So this line is, you know, probably a couple hundred uh, micron. The neat thing about this technique is that we don't have to use an etchant so we can keep putting layers down without worrying about incompatibility of the etchant with the layer beneath it. So for example if we wanted to deposit uh, silicon dioxide on glass we could do that and not have to worry about harming the glass layer underneath with the same etchant that would attack both. Okay, see you next time. Bye.